thalamus. This is the medial surface of the thalamus. This is the anterior end. This is the dilated posterior end. And look at the relation of the posterior end of the thalamus. See, it's overhanging like that. It is overhanging these two colliculi, the superior and the inferior colliculi. So, what is this projecting posterior edge? of the thalamus known as that is the pulvinar. This is the pulvinar. This is the pulvinar of the it receives afferents from both L G D and M G D. So this is the pulvinar of the thalamus. Alright. And here you can see this is the medial surface. This surface what you see this is the medial surface and this is the superior surface. So it has an anterior pole, posterior pole, superior surface, medial, inferior which is related to the subthalamic region here okay and then on the either side laterally that is the lateral surface okay now you can see a faint sulcus which is projecting right down from the inter anteriorly from the interventricular foramen till the cerebral aqueduct posteriorly so this sulcus look at this this sulcus which i am tracing antero superiorly to the interventricular foramen of monroe and postro inferiorly going down below to the cerebral aqueduct. This sulcus is known as the hypothalamic sulcus. Hypothalamic sulcus. And below the hypothalamic sulcus, you have the hypothalamus. And all the nuclei will be placed here. The nuclei of the hypothalamus. All right. Now, just above the corpus callosum, this is the callosal sulcus. And this sulcus which has been dissected out, this sulcus, here, this sulcus which has been dissected out, this is the cingulate sulcus. And you can see a band, beautiful in this specimen, look at this, this. Can you differentiate both the corpus callosum from the cingulum? That's the band of white matter running right down here from the frontal lobe here, going above and then connecting the temporal lobe down below. So this is the cingulum this bundle what you see this is an uh, example of the another association fiber bundle this is the cingulum all right this is the cingulum and the cingulum is involved in which circuit in the formation of the papay circuit it forms the papay circuit all right p a p e z papay circuit and here this is the portion of the medial frontal gyrus Oh, very fidgety. <laughs> All right. Mm, now here in this specimen, you see. So this is the portion of the corpus callosum, and this gyrus, what you see over here, that's the cingulate gyrus. So it's this region. So first, this is the region of corpus callosum. This is the cingulate gyrus, and here you can see this is the cingulate sulcus, and this is the medial frontal gyrus portion of the medial frontal gyrus so, how do you know it's frontal because it's in this region see it is in this region right about the cingulate gyrus will be the medial frontal gyrus oh uh, okay okay it depends on the the region from where we are taking the section of the corpus callosum yes yeah, so, so I, suppose I, I like, know which region. right suppose this is the optic Chiasma. So this portion would be definitely the region of the frontal gyrus. You see, in medial. This is the okay section from the optic chiasma. So this portion here, what you see here, this would definitely not this one. This would definitely be the medial frontal gyrus. This specimen would be from the medial frontal gyrus. Okay. Now coming down below, here you can see the two colliculi. The superior and the inferior colliculi which help in the formation of which structure? The septum. Other than that, the diencephalon is divided into ventral portion and a dorsal portion. The ventral portion of the diencephalon contains the thalamus, the metathalamus and the epithalamus. So the two colliculi help in the formation of the metathalamus. So the metathalamus consists of the superior and the inferior colliculi. Alright? Superior and the inferior colliculi form the metathalamus. These are the structures in the ventral portion of the diencephalon. Alright.
Now here you can see this is the midbrain portion, the tectum and the tegmental, the pons and the medulla oblongata. Now here in this specimen, this is a beautiful specimen. I wanted to show show you the again on the inferior aspect in this specimen. What do you see? The optic nerve, optic chiasma. This is the region of the interpeduncular fossa. So here you can see this is the mammillary body, and here you can see a beautiful nerve emerging from there. What is this? That's the basilar artery. What artery is this? What branch is this? Divergent posterior cerebral artery, and here you can see this is the oculomotor nerve arising from the medial aspect of the cerebral peduncle. Okay, so this is the oculomotor nerve there. Now in this specimen here you can see two very important sulci. This is the calcarine sulcus and this is the parieto-occipital sulcus and this is the cuneus and the precuneus. And located in the depths of the calcarine sulcus, you have the primary visual area, and surrounding it, you have the visual association area. What fibers reach here? You have the optic radiation, the optic radiation which relays here. All right, in this region. Now look at this. This comma-shaped structure, what you see here, this is the head of the caudate nucleus, the body, and what you don't see is the tail, which is still further laterally down. And here, this is another elevation. This is the thalamus. All right. Now, between the caudate nucleus and thalamus, you can see this. This is the stria terminalis. This is the stria terminalis, and you can see the vein. Not in this specimen. Yesterday we showed the other specimen. The vein was very clear, but in this also you can see the faint vein, which is the thalamostriate vein, and this is the stria terminalis. And here you can see another structure. This structure, this is the stria medullaris thalami. This structure, what you see here, this one, that's the stria medullaris thalami. So, what is the difference between the two? Where does the stria terminalis travel, and where does the stria medullaris thalami travel? So, stria terminalis. Where does it begin? Where does it end? It begins from the which one? Stria medullaris or, or stria terminalis? Where does it end? It connects the habenular region with the amygdaloid body. Whereas the stria medullaris thalami connects the sept with the septal area. It connects with the thalamus with the septal area. Yeah. Habenular nucleus. The, there is no pineal body. Now, posteriorly, what we don't see over here, just deep to the plenum of the corpus callosum, you will see a pineal body projecting down from here. Here, it is absent here. So the pineal stalk is bifurcating like this, in the form of a V. This will be the pineal body. This will be the stalk which bifurcates like that. So pineal will be attached like this. So related to the superior stalk will be the habenular commissure and to the inferior stalk will be the posterior commissure. Alright, like you have the stalk of the pituitary that is one single stalk, the infundibulum. Similarly, the pineal gland has a stalk which is divided like this. So it will be right down deep to the plenum attached like this, a small body and the superior stalk will contain the <coughs> habenular commissure and the inferior stalk will have the posterior commissure and this trigone will be the region below that will be the habenular trigone okay it should be just deep to that or above the superior colliculus below the plenum and above the superior colliculus it's usually damaged in most of the specimens all right